Hey everyone, for all the mid laners out there, we wanted to make a comprehensive macro guide so you can have the game knowledge necessary for the season. We're going to cover everything from laning, side laning, grouping, and objectives in this guide. So let's start off with before you're even in the game, the draft phase. Before we get into it though, we can't forget our question of the day, which is, what mid laner do you think is the most hidden OP right now? We think it's Malzahar because in this current meta, most champions build health items and not much MR, so Malzahar can just melt teams once he gets his items. But let us know what you think in the comments. Alright, so when it comes to drafting, there's one important rule that you must always follow. If you do this, you can actually climb to challenger. And that rule is, always play what you enjoy, screw the meta. This is very important because having fun is actually an important part to climbing in league. If you're having fun, you get tilted less and actually play better. This is especially true with mid lane because almost any champion is viable here as the lane is so short. So trust us, and just play whatever you want. You can hit challenger with almost anything in mid. Now with that being said, I'm sure you guys want some good blind picks for mid at the very least. Well the good thing about mid is that counter picks aren't that important, so you can almost blind anything. But some champions can be miserable to play into some comps. For example, playing Syndra into a dive comp like Hecarim, Diana, and Singe is not fun. Syndra is better against low mobility comps. But you know who can deal with those dive comps? Malzahar. Or Cassio if you don't like Mal. Another example would be Fizz. Fizz is good against squishy comps, not tanky ones with a lot of CC. Playing Fizz versus a Braum and Maokai is just awful. So you can pick anything and win, but the comfortable blind picks we recommend are Malzahar, Oriana, Diana, Kiana, Victor, and TF. These champions do have counter picks, but they are manageable, and these champions all scale very well. Now let's talk about leaning. There are a few important things to go over here. First, we need to touch on the general pace of mid, and what I mean by that is how to know when you need to be shoving or freezing and how fast to do it. Basically, the more the game progresses, the more you should be just full blown clearing the wave as fast as possible and looking to make plays on the map. Especially if you are level 9, which is when you get your first ability maxed so champions like Talon, Diana, or Ori have plenty of wave clear at that point. This also means slow pushes are pretty much useless at that point in the game. Slow pushes are strong in the really early parts of the lane, like levels 1 through 3. For example, if you are playing range versus melee like Orianna versus Akali, you can use slow pushes to your advantage very nicely. In the first three levels, Ori can stack up three ways and recall for a free base that Akali can't do anything about. Then as the lane progresses, Ori can slow push waves and roam because Akali can't clear the waves fast enough to punish Ori for roaming. But if Ori was against something like Diana, it would be much harder to go for slow pushes into roams because of Diana's wave clear. Alright, let's touch on freezing a bit. There's a very big misconception with freezing. A lot of you will freeze for an entire laning phase if given the chance. Freezing is something you should be doing for like one or two waves if anything. For example, let's say you're playing Oriana vs Akali again. You do the standard slow push three waves and crash strategy. While doing that, you get a ton of poke on the Akali and the wave starts pushing back to you. This is when you look to freeze because it makes her have to make a decision. Overstay and die or recall while the wave is frozen and lose a bunch of CS. So if she recalls, you could recall with the wave frozen at the same time, then get back the lane at the same time to a frozen wave. But then the Akali will have full health, so she should break the freeze and crash the wave. Which is fine, you already denied her a lot of CS with the freeze. Basically, you only freeze when they mess up the wave, and you want them to overstay or lose a ton of CS from roaming or recalling. Otherwise, pushing is always going to be the strongest thing you can do in mid. It puts the most pressure on the enemy mid and the map, it lets you get vision, roam, or take a recall if you need. Speaking of roaming, let's talk a bit about that. Roaming is something a lot of players really don't understand. The most common problem is roaming to losing lanes. Losing doesn't just mean behind in score or CS. It could mean just being lower health. If you're playing Fizz mid and your top and bot are both getting shoved in and have low health, sometimes it's best to just not roam at all. If you try to make a play around those lanes, you can easily just end up dying and then your whole lead is thrown, especially if the enemy jungler is there. It's better to roam to winning lanes, so basically the opposite situation. If your bot lane is on the enemy bot tower, you should be looking to dive the enemy bot. This has a much higher chance of working. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out our hyper improvement system at skillcap.com. We have professional courses by the top players, smurf commentaries where a challenger player walks you through how to climb out of every rank from iron to diamond, and we upload tons of new exclusive guides to our website each week. In fact, we're so confident you'll improve using our system, that if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using skillcap, you can claim a full refund, so there's no risk. What are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted, link in the description below. Alright, now let's talk about side laning, grouping, and objectives. So, when it comes to side laning, there are two types, pushing and collecting. If you are a mage like Xerath or Velkots, it can be really dangerous to just actually push a side lane, and it's better to just sit mid all game. But we know it can be annoying when your teammates come mid and take your CS, so sometimes you have to collect the waves inside. So when the wave hits the tower, you go and collect the big wave, then you go back to mid. You can try to push one wave if it's safe, but nothing more. It can be really dangerous to farm side as a mage. 
Now, if you're playing something like Diana or Zed, or any assassin really, you can and want to be pushing side lanes if you are strong enough to 1v1 the enemy solo laners. Then after pushing, you either rotate mid to fight, or stay and look for a pick in the side lane. If you can't 1v1 the enemy solo laners, you would do what mages do and collect the sideways instead of push them. Knowing when to side lane and when to group comes down to game state. Meaning, if you think you can win a 5v5, collect sideways and group as much as you can. If you don't think you can win 5v5, then you have two options. If you can push side and pressure the enemy tower or solo laner, you can do that as long as you don't die and pay attention to the map. If not, or if you're on a mage, your main goal would be to wave clear in mid to hold off any siege. That's what mages excel at. If they don't have any minions, they can't really take towers and this leads to teams diving and throwing. These concepts apply even for objectives. The best example is dragon, of course. Players make games much harder trying to contest dragons when they can't win a team fight, and could use that time to just push waves instead. If you're a fed assassin and you don't think you can win 5v5, just split push and take free towers or free 1v1s to get even more fed. Dragon is useless anyways. As a mage, if you don't think you can win 5v5 and a dragon is up, let your team die, take that time to push mid wave, farm the jungle, get some vision, all of this is much better than just running to dragon for a coin flip fight where you have about 20% chance of winning because you're already losing the game. In low elo, I never even go to dragons to be honest, because there is always better things to do for me to get even more fed. If my team is fed though, and the enemy team has the dragon illness where they just can't give it up, then yeah, I'll go to dragon, collect my free kills, and snowball even harder. Don't be the one with the dragon illness. The last situation we're going to talk about is Baron. Baron is different than Dragon because it's very, very strong and ends the game if the team that is ahead gets it. And if the team that is behind gets it, they can stall and catch up very easily. Also, Baron actually drops the resistances of the team that's doing it and damages them. So you can win a lot of team fights even if behind or missing team members. Basically, you should almost always contest Baron unless you're just going in 1v5 with no vision and odds of it working out like 1%. Otherwise, always try to contest the Baron as games are thrown there all the time. It doesn't matter if you're an assassin, a control mage, ADC, it really doesn't matter. Just try to contest the Baron and focus on killing the enemy team members and not stealing the Baron unless you're something like Lux. Because the odds of you stealing it are very small if you don't have some high damage burst ability like Lux Alt or Zig's Alt. And it's better to just try to kill them and remove the Baron from the map. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, the link's in the description below. Alright, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. You should have the general idea behind mid lane macro now. Of course, there are more things to learn, but we can't teach all of League in one video. But we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.